Now let's talk about another very important and key feature of NTN communication. This is a large Doppler shift. Of course, Doppler effect, it depends on speed, it depends on relative speed. You probably know that Doppler effect, it is when receiver and transmitter is in relative movement. For example, when a sound of car which approaching you, it has higher pitch. When it goes away from you, it has lower pitch. So the same with electromagnetic waves. And this could be a huge problem because it increases intercarrier or inter symbol interference. This probably not, not a big issue for terrestrial networks because uh, relative speed uh, is not so high. Uh, but when it comes to uh, here is a calculation, for example, for LEO satellite with uh, 1000 kilometers per hour relative speed. So in this case, it would be large, large Doppler shift. 3GPP actually working a lot to fix that problem, to solve somehow to... And one of the possible solution is to use, that's obviously, large subcarrier spacing, but uh, this could be not suitable for every case and um, another solution is to use precompensation by ephemeris knowledge ephemeris this is a set of parameters that describe the movement of ntn node over time or otfs delayed doppler channels this is um, very interesting technology this is probably more about 6g networks especially for hypersonic objects with extreme uh, velocity. So if you're actually interested in 6G networks, in 6G technologies, uh, very soon I will release my own course, my own total overview of uh, 6G features. So please look at my main page. Another challenge is additional attenuations the large attenuation of signal comparing with uh, terrestrial networks. Here is atmospheric attenuations, scintillation. This is a very interesting phenomenon of rapid fluctuations in amplitude and phase of signal. And of course, clouds and rain could affect signal strength. But this is uh, heavily depends on frequency bands especially for millimeter waves. We will talk about it later. In addition to that, we can see terrestrial networks, they have more scattering uh, comparing with uh, satellite networks, more multipath signal pro propagation features, but this is not so common for signals from uh, satellite communication. This is um, more straightforward, the less multipath conditions. And just for reference, typical signal strength from GPS could be around minus 125, 135 dB. It means that on average, the signal from satellite is uh, lower than the signal in terrestrial network from the cellular network, for example. And here is an example of how weather condition can impact attenuation for different transmitted frequencies. Here is attenuation in dB per one kilometer. And here is frequencies. So this is a logarithmic scale. And uh, we can see, for example, for millimeter waves, in case of uh, very light rain, just 0.1 dB is attenuation. But in case of heavy rain, it could be for several dB. Or if we're talking about uh, X, K, U, K, E band, this would be about 8 to 10 dB per 1 kilometer, which should be taken into account, definitely. Here is another example. We can see the asinar and time, the variation of signal of, of noise ratio in time. This is for X-band connectivity, and X-band, this is in between 8 to 12 gigahertz. And um, with rain intensity, with uh, medium rain, I would say, with uh, light rain even, uh, we can see that SNR is also a little bit lower than for just regular signal. So clouds, rains, 
they also affect signal strength for satellite communication, especially for millimeter waves, high frequencies. Also such parameter as elevation angle, it has pretty much importance. The elevation angle, it is um, the angle between at, at which the user can see the satellite. This is a critical parameter, I would say. It is impact on all previously mentioned features of signal. Obviously, closer to 90 degree, the better, yes? And uh, because this is the most shortest way for signal, less attenuation, less scattering, less uh, other changes in the path of the signal closer to 90 degree is better. And of course, it also reflects in less elliptical coverage. Our coverage more like beam footprint, not like elliptical coverage. And talking about elliptical beam coverage, it also depends on elevation angle, of course. Well, it is obviously that the closer satellite transmit signal, the smaller coverage is. Uh, that's just a geometry and that's why just a few geo satellites are needed for covering almost the whole planet, while hundreds of them is needed in case of LEO satellite network. And as I said before, it depends on elevation angle. Also, we should take into account the antenna design and beam forming capabilities of satellite. In case of broadband communication, very probably there is a need to accumulate all power to small beam, to small area where the user is located, we will talk about it as well. And the second reason uh, of beams is to serve many users and to use frequency read, as the architecture of SATCOM are different from cellular network. There are no three sectors antennas with multiple bands, with multiple cells. We, can, uh, we have only one satellite with uh, just a few antennas, with a few beams. So uh, the architecture is completely different from cellular run networks and all users basically located in one direction because if you see a satellite you typically illuminate the ground. What else we can say? The um, coverage depends on satellite attitude, elevation angle, antenna design as we said already and um, different signal levels at the spot edge as it is expected. So, for example, at the edge of uh, the spot of the coverage uh, will be a little bit less, a little bit lower signal strength, whereas uh, right below the satellite it would be a little bit better, yes, because the way is shorter, uh, attenuations is less. It also should be taken into account when you work with satellite systems. Now let's look at this example. This is example, this is just uh, covering one cell, for example, and here is beam B is uh, highly elliptical and covers the primary cell, but also four additional cells. So it could be, it could be as a positive thing or as a negative thing. It depends on the number of satellites, it depends on the use case for internet of things for mobile broadband, so it could be taken into account as well. Now let's talk about single beam operation and multi-beam operation. For single beam operation, it is still relevant, it is still possible. Yes, in this case, all users get the same data. Basically, it is about simple payload, simple equipment. In this case, you need high onboard transmit power. Mostly, this is for broadcasting and for half duplex mode. But the main negative factor here is uh, less capacity. One cell, one beam, one frequency, uh, one code division. So that's obviously for that system, it is less capacity. Comparing with multi-beam, with a satellite fruit footprint, which can transmit multiple beams with um, different cell IDs, with uh, different beams. So in this case, users can have uh, different data in each beam. Spectrum could be reused more effectively. Beams are more narrower, so we can use the same uh, transmit gain, narrow it 
into less coverage, so increased gain. Full duplex and voice also available and the high data rate services it is also available. But the equipment is more complex, could be not so good for the complexity for the whole system. As I said before, frequency reuse could be used in case of interbeam operation. And here is uh, an example from 3GPP document. This is uh, number one, no frequency reuse, as we already discussed. Number two, this is frequency reuse with three. This is more or less good. This is uh, reduced interbeam interference and better link budget. But for single user, this could be not so uh, desirable, let's say, because the bandwidth, the common bandwidth is divided by several sectors and the speed per user is less than in this case. But this is also good for large UE numbers comparing with no reuse. This is also good for interference minimization between uh, different users and cells. And uh, the third solution is a kind of uh, in, in the middle. This is frequency reuse too with polarization reuse. We also may uh, distinguish cells and beams using polarization, for example, right polarization and left-handed circular polarization. This is, uh, as I said already, kind of intermediate alternative. 